A new study indicates that brown trout are at the risk of meth addiction as a result of amphetamines making their way into our waterways. So this was a study that was done in the Czech Republic. Researchers from the Czech Republic took 120 juvenile brown trout that were bred in captivity and kept them in two different tanks, each containing 60 fish and 350 liters of water. One tank was then laced with methamphetamine to a concentration of one microgram per liter, a level often found in freshwater rivers in Europe and the UK. Finally, a story that's not about the United States. <laughs> exactly. I'm real good about that, although I'm sure we have similar problems here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, now some water systems in the world have been found to be poisoned with amphetamine levels 20 times higher than that. So it gives you an idea of how certain substances make their way into our waterways, obviously impacting the environment and also impacting humans, right? So the fish in the experiment stayed in their tanks for eight weeks before they were transferred to a different drug-free aquarium. Researchers then gave the fish the choice of staying in clean water or returning to a drug-riddled tank. What they, uh, what they saw was a clear preference by the exposed fish for the contaminated waters as they suffered withdrawals during the first four days after moving to fresh water. And look, these results are pretty shocking. Every single one of the 60 fish in the meth laden tank had signs of the drug in their brain after eight weeks. However, this dropped to one in eight after 10 days in clean water. Addicted fish were also found to be less active than trout that had never experienced the drug. So John, let's Less discuss active. this a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, especially considering amphetamines do the opposite, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how it works, I haven't done it. Um, yeah, it's terrifying. Like when you see things like this, it makes you wonder two things. First is how anyone stays healthy mm -hmm. with all of, I mean, I, like the portion of the water that's not meth, is it, what is it just a slurry of BPAs at this point? Like there's a microplastics and there's so much in there. And the other is like, it's fun to be a grad student sometimes. Oh, totally. We're gonna get these fish messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, have fun. Yeah. We're gonna run around. Um, yeah, no, but it's important obviously because as you point out, well, the water in the tanks is going to be dissimilar from river water in about a million different ways, at least in terms of the concentration. It might actually be sort of like a, a lesser case than you would find in, in a lot of areas in the Czech Republic, let alone, I don't know the numbers in America. Mm -hmm. I'm imagining there are areas that are probably quite rough in terms of that. Yeah, and look, this this study, let me just get ahead of the comments, um, did find a correlation <laughs> with amphetamines in the water, uh, but not necessarily causation. So this is, but this is an issue. Well, that if they found it in their brain and they controlled their environment so they were exposed to it I only know, through the tank they were in. Yeah, uh, the unless research God very was getting specifically, involved. <laughs> yeah, the, the research, and they're very careful, right? Like, so they want to be clear on their methodology, and the, the research specifically draws a, a correlation. Um, and I wanted to be clear on that. But yes, you're right. And, and so, why even study this? Well, first of all, we should care about what we're doing to our environment, how we're impacting um, the ecosystem uh, through our behaviors and in this case um, drug use and by the way amphetamines it doesn't it doesn't mean that like people are like tossing meth in mm -hmm. freshwater rivers, right? Uh, there are amphetamines that are literally prescribed to people in the form of Adderall and stuff like that. And so the improper disposal of those substances make their way into uh, rivers, freshwater rivers, and it has larger implications that the researchers are looking at. So yeah. uh, one of the researchers said such unnatural attraction to one area together with documented changes in behavior could result in unexpected ecological consequences influencing whole ecosystems. The elicitation of drug addiction in wild fish could represent another example of unexpected evolutionary selection pressure for species living in urban environments along with ecological, ecological side effects for human societal problems with aquatic ecosystems. Mm -hmm. um, so there's concern about like the broader impact of something like this. And so for those of you who are wondering, well, how do our waterways get polluted with drugs? Uh, the researchers um, 
obviously laid that out for people to understand. Human drug use can spill over into streams and rivers because the chemicals pass through water or wastewater systems that aren't designed to extract them. So drugs reach waterways through a variety of routes. Improper disposals, I mentioned earlier, such as being washed down a sink or toilet, don't do that, is one way. While the drugs can also invade the habitat of fish via the urine of people taking them, which re-enters the water system despite being filtered. So yeah, it can pass through us, like a lot of other things, but yeah, man. Yeah, so man, we are just, we just love to destroy things. Yeah. That's what we do, that's what we do. We're mad scientists and the world is our lab. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.